a split step is a preparation move that you do just before you move for the shuttle. So it looks something like this. You start at the ball of your feet and then you go up. Typically, your feet ends up wider, but not always. Sometimes you can just do this and then of course when you're returning and then you do this and then you move, you know? Yeah, split step. That's your feet by the way, if you haven't realized. Did you know that there are many sports that use some sort of a preparatory footwork just before moving any fast reaction sports? Some examples include soccer, and of course there is the tennis, even boxing. They use this bounce footwork. And last but not least, of course, badminton. And of course, I had to use a Singaporean, you know? Okay, so the real question is how useful is the split step? So according to the laws of conservation of momentum, the momentum of an object will remain constant unless an external force acts upon said objects. Anyways, to sum it all up, research shows that the split step do indeed increase your speed. So there are multiple research papers that have done this. I'm going to link them below. We can kind of just check them out uh, if you would like. And now that we've understand that the split, split, the split steps improves your speed. So the thing is that as a player, I noticed that there are variations of the split step. So which one is the best kind of split step and how do we actually do a split step well, right? So if you look at this video, you kind of see that Peter Gator uses a very hard or kind of high split step in, the, in this video. Play it. So now you compare that with the one that Kento Momota does when he was playing with his girlfriend friend from the national team. The question is which one is better? So to be honest, I really don't know. I tried doing it myself, if, I can, if you can see this video, and Really, I got inspired by this idea because last week I was playing with a, you know, a friend that was formerly a state player, Malaysian player. So he was demonstrating his footwork and he showed me this footwork and I was like, yeah, I actually did see many players that do this kind of footwork and I don't understand why. Like, what's the difference between a high split step and a low split step? I did some research, you know, digging up YouTube to see what I could, what I could find and what I found was this, was this particular video uh, of a tennis coach that describes how you know different split steps are used for different conditions. But this is for tennis, so I'm thinking, hey, if you know you can transfer this to badminton, it might make sense. In essence, he said that the high split step is kind of used for more long distance travel, where you want to travel much longer distances. So they use this in a context where you're out of the court. You know, you got to do high split steps if you want to go far and if you're at the front of the court where you need to really react very fast think of boxing, really short distances, explosive steps you want to make sure that your split steps are really low so very low, but move, but move so yeah, I mean that's what I've noticed if you haven't, you should check out that video, the tennis video I'm going to link it down below as well with that out of the way, let's move on to the last question which is what is or how do you do the split step properly like how do you do it well or use it well and the answer is it's all about the timing it's all about the timing so think of split step kind of like dancing you need to get in the right momentum so just when the shuttle comes towards you you are ready to move so to be very 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 exact your feet should be you know you jump up and then you land on the floor when you land on the floor it's the same time that your opponent hits the shuttle. So when the shuttle moves, you're immediately ready to move. Get what I mean? Or if not, you know, you're like very slightly slower than the 
racket. So think of this: you jump, park, you land at the same time that I hit the shuttle, your opponent. You know, so that is the timing. It's a lot, a lot about timing. Research have shown that it's faster, so you should try to adopt if you haven't already. Yeah, keep practicing. Let me know what other questions you have. I'll try to see if I can help in whatever ways you know regarding split step and. Yeah, I decided to talk about split step because um, I was not I noticed this split step video by badminton exercises. So credits to them and yeah that got me thinking like hey I saw my friend doing the high split steps, they were doing the low split steps. So that's why you know it sparked a whole conversation and debate on my head. So I wanted to share with you guys and yeah, that's it for this uh, Wednesday video and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to our channel. Oh yes, 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 one more thing. There is one other good news I want to share with you guys. So Okay, so, so Edwin from the Singapore Badminton Association said that I can now collaborate with some of the national players in Singapore, like Singapore national team. So we can work with some of the players to do some uh, fun, simple activities that do not take up too much of their time. Kind of like the BWF videos that you see, you know. Yeah, let me know what you think, what videos would be fun to do and watch. And by the way, this is a name card, so I'm going you know, Mm -hmm. And also, one extra extra thing, I totally forgot about it. I wanted to tell you guys uh, that I have started making a badminton course which is called the Backhand Mastery Course. Backhand Mastery Course. So what it does is that it helps develop your backhand to a very high level. This video goes through in, a, in excruciating detail how do you do the baseline backhand well. So if you want to learn like how do you drop from the baseline consistently, from the high, from the mids, from the lows, like as well as all the different practical use cases that I use, like I adapt my backhand and my mindset, you know, how do I follow up after I do the backhand, the strategies that I have for, for baseline backhand, you know, these are the kind of insights that would bring your intermediate level backhand to an advanced high level backhand. So this is what the course entails. Um, what else would you guys like to find out? Because I cover footwork, I cover mindset, I cover follow through, backhand, top strategies that are that is very commonly used uh, in competitions mm, try to cover defense um, may not get into it so soon i'm trying to um, but i'll try to see if i can collaborate with some of the best players in the world teach you know their backhand defense trying to uh, yeah so let me know what you guys think i should include and how interested are you in the backhand mastery course? I just want to get a feel of your interest and stay tuned to the next video. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.